so the region where the leaf is attached to the stem is called as the leaf base those leaves having a network of veinlets is called as the reticulate venation the compound leaves again it is of two types one is pinnately compound leaves and the other one is palmately compound leaves based on how the leaves are arranged on the stem or the branch which is called as phyllotaxy the leaves are of three types one is alternate arrangement opposite arrangement and the other one is world arrangement hello everyone a warm welcome to another session on chapter 5 that is morphology of flowering plants i am dr divya biology faculty vidyashram pre university college mysore temple of excellence so in the previous session we had started with the chapter wherein we studied about the stem and the roots and we also study the modifications that occur in the stem and the root and these modifications are the ones that form a basis for the classification of the plants in today's session we shall study about the structure of the leaves and what are the different types of leaves or arrangement of leaves that are present so leaf leaf is a flattened structure that is present in the plants and it is one of the main organ of the plant because it contains abundant chlorophyll or chloroplast or the chlorophyll pigment that helps in the photosynthesis process so when we see the structure of the leaf they are usually flattened and they are borne on the stem so the stem is the one that supports the leaf or it gives rise to the leaf so they arise or they are borne on the stem and leaves they usually develop at the node and they have a axillary bud or a bud in the axis so this is the stem from the stem the leaf arises and in the axis there is a small bud so this bud later on develops into a branch again so the axillary buds that are present at the node so this is the node so that axillary bud that is present at the node it later on gives rise to the development of a branch and the leaves they actually originate from the apex of the shoot that is the apical region of the shoot it or it arises from the shoot so exactly in the shoot or the stem from where it arises if you have a question it actually arises from the meristematic region so meristematic region why because remember while talking about root i had told you there are meristematic cells that are present at the tip which help in the elongation of the root right similarly here the stem has certain cells region where it has actively dividing cells that are the meristematic cells and from that meristematic cells or in that particular region the leaf usually arises and the arrangement of the leaf is usually acropetal that is they always grow upwards that is they arise towards the upwards and also the older leaves will be present at the base and the younger leaves will be present because as the plant grows the young leaves start to develop acropetally so therefore the lower leaves will become the older leaves and the leaves that are present at the tip or somewhere in between will become the young leaves so therefore the leaves originate from the shoot apical meristem and they are arranged in an acropetal order that is they grow upwards that is from the base they start growing towards the tip of the plant that is the apex of the plant and also that or the apex of the shoot and also the older leaves will be present at the base and the younger leaves will be present at the tip and they the leaves are the most important vegetative organ for photosynthesis why because in the leaves the chloroplasts are present and the chloroplasts they contain abundant chlorophyll pigments which help in synthesizing the food or which help in photosynthesis so this is about the leaf so next moving on to the parts of the leaf so the leaf it is made up of different parts that is the leaf base so leaf base the region where the leaf is attached to the stem say for example i have drawn a stem here so this region will actually form the leaf base 
it is the leaf base so the region so the region where the leaf is attached to the stem is called as the leaf base so leaf is attached to the stem and it has stipules the next part is the after the leaf base you will find the stipules so stipules are nothing but two small lateral leaves or they are leaf like structures which are present at the leaf base so you can see here the leaf like structures which are present at the leaf base so these are nothing but the stipules they are not actually leaves but they are leaf like structures so these are the stipules so these stipules actually provide protection to the developing leaves and also they have chlorophyll and they also help in photosynthesis so this is about the stipules so next important part is the pulvinus so in legumes so pulvinus is not present in all the leaf plants uh, having leaves but they are usually seen in plants that is leguminous plants so in leguminous plants at the base of the leaf there is a small bulging or a swollen portion so at the base there is a sw small swollen portion so that swollen portion is nothing but called as the pulvinus next important part generally found in all the leaves is the petiole so petiole actually hold helps to hold the leaf blade just like a fan for a fan you have a stick right one stick will be the hand fan then we'll have the fan so that it will give us support give support to that particular fan so similarly like that in order to support this entire lamina or the leaf blade this petiole will help and also the petiole it is lengthy uh, or slender and it also helps in attachment of the leaf to the stem so petioles they help to hold the leaf blade you know into light so usually there is one uh, experiment wherein what is done is that you put a plant in a closed um, uh, box that and make a small hole through which only through which the light enters so what happens here is the petiole and all will start bending and growing towards the light why because it will stretch stretch the leaf towards the light so that it can photosynthesize so therefore they actually help in holding the leaf blade towards the light and they are long thin and flexible and they allow the leaf blades to flutter in the wind so that it brings fresh air into the leaf surfaces so that is also one of the major function of the petiole so petiole not just helps in forms a connectivity between the leaf base between the lamina of the leaf and the stem but also it helps in holding the leaf blade towards the light and also it helps in movement of the leaf or it helps in swaying of the leaf uh, whenever there is wind so that it carries the fresh air to different uh, regions of the plant so this is the function of the petiole next important part of the petiole is the lamina or the leaf blade so so far i was using the word blade here that is nothing but also called as lamina so this entire part of the leaf is nothing but the lamina or the leaf blade so this lamina or the leaf blade they are usually green and when compared to all the other parts of the leaf they are expanded or larger in size they are green because they have the chlorophyll pigment and also they have veins and veinlets so veins they actually the main part that is vein so this is the vein so i'll just write here veins and these are the veinlets so whatever small uh, veins arise from the main vein is there no that is the veinlets so they have veins veinlets and they also have a midrib or a rachis midrib so these are the parts of a leaf so they have a green expanded part which is called as the lamina and in the lamina they have the veins and the veinlets and these veins they actually provide rigidity or support to the leaf blade say so they provide rigidity to the leaf blade and also they act as channels or network for transporting water mineral nutrients uh, etc to different parts of the leaf so they act as channels of transport of water minerals and also different food materials and next moving on to midrib so midrib it is the middle prominent vein so 
this midrib support all the veins and the veinlets. So, this is it. It is nothing but a frame. It is the main part of the leaf. That is, it is the most main vein or the most prominent vein. So, midrib is the most prominent vein. And also, the shape of the leaf, the margin, that is the shape, the margin. So, this is the margin. So, the border or the margin of the leaf uh, and also the arrangement of the veins, all those, the shape of the leaf, everything varies in different plant species on ba and based on these, the classification of the plants has been done. So, next we shall study the uh, variation in the veination or uh, what are the different types of veins that are seen in the leaves. So, I told you classification of the plants can be done based on the shape of the leaf, the structure of the leaf and the parts of the leaf and all that. So, first we shall study based on the arrangement of the veins and the veinlets, there are two different types of leaves. One is reticulate and the other one is parallel. So, what is reticulate veination and parallel veination we shall see. So, reticulate veination. So, here the veinlets form a network. So, what is the veinlet? So, I will show you here. Now, this is the midrib. So, this will be the midrib and then arising from the midrib will be the vein and from these veins, whatever small veins you can see, right, these are nothing but the veinlets. These are the veinlets. So, here if you look at the veinlets, you can see they form like a network, like a mesh, they form a network. So, those leaves having a network of veinlets is called as the reticulate veination. So, reticulate veination, veinlets form a network of veins and they are usually seen in dicotyledonous plants. So, now you understood dicotyledonous plant, they have taproot, then they have reticulate veination. So, those plants having a taproot and a reticulate venation can be placed under dicotyledons or dicotyledonate. So, next moving on to parallel venation. So, here the veins run parallel to each other. Can you see here just in a stretch of line like this, they will run parallel to each other. So, what is parallel? So, in mathematics and all you have, you would have studied parallel. It is represented by the symbol like this. One line that is present close to the other. So, here they run in parallel and here there is no network of veins being present. It is just the main veins that run in parallel. So, veins run parallel to each other within the lamina and these are usually seen in the monocotyledonous plants. So, they are seen in monocotyledon plants. So, those plants having, uh, remember, those plants having fibrous root system and having parallel roots, uh, parallel veins or in their leaves can be put under the monocotyledon. So, this is how based on the veins the classification can be done. So, next moving on to based on the type of the leaves. So, we shall study about the first type that is simple leaf. So, in simple leaf the lamina it is entire. So, you can see the leaf is entire. There is no multiple leaves present on one petiole or one main branch. The leaf is just single single. So, the lamina is entire. So, it is entire. Lamina is entire as you can see and when it is incised, the incisions do not touch the midrib. So, you can, when you cut the leaf, so when you tear the leaf, it will not touch the midrib. Easily it will tear. So, these are simple leaves. And next moving on to compound leaves. So, in compound leaves, actually, when you make an incision the, of the lamina, they will reach up to the midrib, breaking into a number of leaflets. So, you can see here in one main uh, petiole, in one petiole, you can see a large number of leaflets. One, one leaf is there, then from the same thing again, the second leaf, then one more leaf here. Different leaves are arising from one main petiole. So, that is nothing but compound leaves. So, you can see the difference between the simple and the compound leaves. And compound leaves, they actually help. Why? Because they get enough oxygen for respiration. To provide plants enough oxygen for respiration, compound leaves are usually helpful. And in compound leaves, again, it is of two types. One is pinnately compound leaves and the other one is palmately compound leaves. So, compound leaves is divided into 
pinnately compound leaves and palmately compound leaves. So we shall study about pinnately compound leaves first. So a number of leaflets. So now this was a leaf. Now too many tiny leaves, it will form a leaflet. So a number of leaflets will be present on the common axis. So I told you there will be one common axis. So this is a common axis. common axis and in this common axis a number of leaflets will be present. So there will be a number of leaflets and also they will have their own midriffs separately. The best example I have taken here is neem. So number of leaflets are present on a common axis in the ratchets and these actually represents the midrib of the leaf. So this is the pinnately compound. Next moving on to the palmately compound. So palmately compound leaves just look like the hand. The, this is nothing but palmately compound. It just looks like the palm. So that is why it is called palmately compound. Here the leaflets are attached at a common point. So can you see here the petiole, petiole is there and at one common point here the leaves are being attached or leaves arise from one common point. So that is at the tip of the petiole. So this is nothing but palmately compound leaves. So in pinnately compound leaves one main axis was there and from the axis the petiole arises and then the leaf arises. But in here only petiole will be there at the at one point of the petiole at the tip of the petiole the leaflets will arise. So these are the leaflets. So leaflets will arise. So this is nothing but palmately compound and it is usually seen in silk cotton. So that is both are also compound leaves. So in compound leaves there is pinnately compound leaves and palmately compound leaves. So next moving on to the phyllotaxy. So what is phyllotaxy? Based on the arrangement. So arrangement of the leaves is called as phyllotaxy. So based on the pattern and arrangement of leaves on the stem or the branch that is based on how the leaves are arranged on the stem or the branch which is called as phyllotaxy the leaves are of three types one is alternate arrangement opposite arrangement and the other one is world arrangement so what is alternate arrangement here a single leaf will arise from the main axis so and it will be alternate to each other so alternate means leaving one so actually i'll show you here so here there is opposite leaf. So in this opposite leaf, say for example, I draw one leaf here. This leaf is alternate to this leaf. So that is nothing but all. So if I draw exactly, these will be opposite leaves. Opposite leaves. So when it comes to alternate leaves, one leaf here and the other leaf, instead of arising from this point, it will arise from here. It is alternate to and instead of arising from this point itself, it will arise from here. So this is nothing but alternate leaf arrangement. So a single leaf, it will arise at each node in an alternate manner. So the best example I've taken here is China rose, mustard and sunflower. So these plants usually have alternate leaf arrangement. Next is opposite. So opposite as I showed you, the pair of leaves arise at each node and they lie. So in one each node, the pair of leaf will arise and they lie exactly opposite to each other. So <clears throat> say for example, one leaf is here, the other one will arise exactly opposite to the other. So that is nothing but opposite leaf arrangement. And the best example is Calotropis and Guava plant. So this arrangement is seen in Calotropis and Guava plant. So next moving on to world leaf arrangement, world. World means they are arranged spirally. So here more than two leaves arise at a node. So, so far only one leaf was arising at a node. So here more than two leaves, one, two, one, two. So from each node, each node, two leaves are arising and therefore they occur to be in spiral arrangement or in a whirl like arrangement. So the best example is Alstonia plants. In Alstonia's plants, they have world leaf arrangement. So this is based on the phyllotaxy or the arrangement of the leaves. The leaves are of three types, alternate, opposite and world leaves. So next moving on to 
the modifications that are seen in the leaves like how we studied the modification in the roots and the stem similarly modifications can be seen in the leaf as well the first modification is the production of the tendrils so tendrils remember we i had told you about the production of the tendrils in the stem so stem got modified into tendrils the best example was grapes watermelon cucumber uh, all that just like that in pea plants the leaf get modified so that it will facilitate climbing or the further growing of the pea plant so you can see here these are nothing but tendrils so instead of formation of a leaf in the place of the leaf the tendrils will get formed so this is one of the modification and the best example is peas next is product modification of the leaves into spines in stem stem got modified into fleshy leaves in the case of cactus right and in this case leaf got modified into spines so here especially for defense not just defense whenever the water is very scarce the leaves that are there will get modified into spines so that the transpiration process or the loss of water from the plants will be reduced that is also one of the reason so here you can see the spines being formed on the cactus best example is cactus next is fleshy leaves so fleshy leaves is actually nothing but in onion the leafy parts the layers that you see right that is nothing but the fleshy leaves and they usually help in storage of the food so onion garlic so in onion that pink covering that is there that is nothing but the fleshy leaves which got modified into a bulb and again garlic also they got modified so in those uh, modified fleshy leaves abundant amount of food reserve will be present so this is about fleshy leaves next is expanded petiole so petiole i told you they are very slender and thin right so if this is the leaf uh, so uh, this is the leaf then this is the petiole and it looks very slender and very thin or uh, just like a small stick but in some plants the petioles get expanded and they also become green why because when they get expanded the surface area will increase so when the surface area increases the amount of chlorophyll that is there in them will increase therefore that will also act as a secondary structure which help in photosynthesis so therefore petioles they expand and they become green and they also help in synthesizing the food so can you see here the petiole it got expanded actually these leaves they club together to form a expanded petiole so the petiole got expanded the best example is australian acacia so i have taken the example of australian acacia here and these they are also green in color and almost looks like a large leaf therefore helping in excess of food synthesis through photosynthesis so this is one of the modification that is expanded petiole next is some of the plants they have insectivorous leaves so the leaves gets modified in such a way that it helps in trapping the insect so say for example i have taken pitcher plant so here a pitcher is pro, uh, this leaf the leaf that is there it will get modified into a pitcher so that pitcher will actually help in trapping of the insect so this is one of the modif the, this is nothing but it's not a flower or something it is just a modified leaf it is a modified leaf similarly here also in venus fly trap there is the leaf that is modified so that to act like a flap whenever the insect comes in it can just close off and kill and feed on the insect so this is nothing but some of the modifications in the leaf so in today's class you studied about the uh, structure of the leaf what are the different parts present in the leaf and you studied about uh, the different types of leaves that are present based on venation there is reticulate venation and a uh, parallel venation and based on the arrangement of the leaves that is phyllotaxy you studied about simple leaf and compound leaf again in compound leaf there was pinnately compound leaf and palmately compound leaf and also you studied about the modifications that occur in the leaves wherein the leaves get modified into uh, spines they get modified into expanded petioles they get modified in insectivorous plants and also they get modified in the into 
tendrils so all that is in climbers they get modified into tendrils so all this you have studied in today's session so i hope you understood the session very well so in the next coming session we shall study about the flower we shall concentrate on the flower which is the main important part of the plant because the reproduction and the life cycle of the plant actually gets completed or it continues with the flower so therefore flower is one of the main important part we shall study the flower the arrangement of the flower and different types of aestivation in the flower and all that so we shall meet in the next coming session thank you